So I'm here with, uh, with Robert Kenzie, uh, who is the writer of Dire Destiny. Um, he has a uh, artist who is all the way out in Poland, which is where The Witcher comes from. And um, I think he is the person here at Comic-Con with the most radio voice. Why, thank so you. I would love to uh, have your pitch uh, on, on video. Well, certainly. Um, what I do is when people come up, I just want to tell them all about this great book. It's called Dire Destiny. And this is Swords and Sorcery Meets the X-Files. Three heroes on the run, fighting for their sanity and survival in a world in the middle of its own dark age. Now it's got action, adventure, mystery, horror, pathos, drama, it's all there, and all yours for the low price of only $16 if you're coming to Baltimore Comic Con. It's a little bit more expensive at our website, which is DireDestiny.com, but you can definitely buy it there. You can see all of our comics there. Well, we're up to Chapter 4 in the series right now. Uh, my, say, my name again is Rob Kenzie. I am the writer. Uh, the artist is my good friend, Mr. Mikowai Ostapuk. I have one of, uh, let's see, I've got some original art of his here. You can see some of the artwork that he's done while he's developing the characters. Let's see. Well, here he's called Kells. He's like a sorcerer type. So uh, right now, uh, particularly with Dynamite um, bringing back Red Sonia, mm -hmm. Conan, um, Sheena, lots of their their different uh, pulp era heroes, sword and sorcery. Um, it's very hot right now. Um, what is it that brought you to the genre? What is it you like about the genre? I'm an old school gamer. Uh, my, uh, you know, I go back to Dungeons and Dragons first edition. I grew up on Tolkien and Michael Moorcock and uh, you know the Popper the Grey Mouser series by Fritz Lieber. All those great old sort of like gritty sword and sorcery. Well, I mean Tolkien's not really that gritty, but if you look at Moorcock and Lieber and those kind of guys, uh, you know Conan, Robert E. Howard. I let like old school gritty sword and sorcery type uh, fiction. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of action. Uh, you know our our story is you know very much in that vein. It's kind of hard boiled. Um, and it's uh, kind of like almost a film noir style. You know, I say it's like Sword and Sorcery meets The X-Files because there's a lot of mystery, a lot of intrigue. The characters don't quite know what's happening in the world around them, and the idea is to try and figure out, you know, why their world seems to be falling into ruin and why they're in a dark age, really. So uh, it goes way back to all of that kind of, you know, I played Dungeons and Dragons for years. I, I still play Pathfinder. In fact, if you go to DireDestiny.com right now, uh, I have actually written some books for the Pathfinder role-playing system, which are available at Paizo.com or at our website at DireDestiny.com. Uh, it's under the moniker of the very last book series because it started with the very last book about mounted combat, which, you know, why would anyone write another one after my definitive edition was my, was my thought on that. But uh, we have a couple of other things there. There's uh, a module uh, that we published a few years ago in conjunction with RPGMP3.com called The Tomb of Hagamoth. Uh, that was quite successful, so you can still buy that at our website. Um, and we've got something, if you're a fan of sword and sorcery, if you're a fan of fantasy, I have a very unique book to let you know about, which is now available. You can buy it at DireDestiny.com. You can also find it at Paizo.com as a PDF. But right here, I have a book called Hammer on Stone. I don't know if you can really see it because it's kind of a dark cover. It's called Hammer on Stone, Poetry of the Dwarves. It is the only book of dwarven poetry here at the con or like anywhere, really, in the world, I would imagine. But it's uh, all the poetry you can stand about mining, mead, war, and women with beards, all in one volume. Yeah, I looked through it yesterday and it is hilarious. It's, it's, you've captured exactly the type of poetry they would have and it's, it's it's funny from our point of view, but it's not it's not comical. It's just it, it really it does that, express the culture that they would have. It's got exactly it's got that sort of dour traditionalist uh, Sturm and Drang kind of feel yeah. to it that you would imagine you know surly dwarves would uh, would would like in their poetry. And uh, uh, one more question for Dire Destiny. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the heroes, or, or or if they're not if they're anti heroes, tell us about the protagonists. Oh, certainly, certainly. Well, here I'll. Uh, bring up the, the cover a little bit here. Um, this fellow here with the red hair and the big sword, his name is Eric, sometimes called Eric the Wolf. He's a bandit, a highwayman, living on the fringes of society, uh, but a man of faith, but a man who is losing his faith, for they say that his gods are dead. Uh, certainly his gods have been silent for quite a long time. Uh, will he be able to find his way back into the good graces of the town? Will he be able to recapture his lost faith? We're going to have to read the book to find out about that. Uh, this fellow here with the blonde hair and the strange device on his arm, uh, his name is Kells, sometimes called Kells the Liar, sometimes 
sometimes called Kells the Thief. <laughs> he's got a long string of unfortunate epithets attached to his name. Uh, he's a sorcerer and a drunkard and a misanthrope. Um, and uh, this this strange device on his arm. How did he come by it? He calls it his mark. And how was he marked? How did he acquire it? Does he really control it? Does it control him? Well, you're gonna have to read the book to find out about that. Uh, this last character here on the cover, her name is Nissa. She's a young girl, an elf child. Her people supposedly disappeared hundreds of years ago from the world. So how does she come to find herself? Raised among humans, although she can never truly live among them. Will she be able to find her lost heritage? Well, you're gonna have to read the book about it and find out about that. Now, all three of them are outcasts living on the edges of their society. They must come together to see if they can find out why their world is crumbling all around them. Oh, and is there anything I can do about it? Or if it is indeed far, far too late. Well, that is the story of Dire Destiny. And you can check it all out at DireDestiny.com. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you.